Uh, we know what the risks are, broadly speaking. We have things like uh, students using AI to cheat and therefore not getting as much benefit out of education as they otherwise might. We have people using AI to create non-consensual nude images of people. This is, of course, affecting hundreds of thousands of primarily women uh, in every country in the world. These chatbots can, quote unquote, hallucinate. They can generate wrong information. And, uh, you know, there have been many stories of lawyers getting into trouble with judges and predictive AI, which is used to make consequential decisions about people when we apply for a job, when we apply for a loan, or even in the criminal justice system in many countries. And this is a very dubious kind of AI. It's being used to predict who will commit a crime, who will pay back a loan. Uh, in your new book, uh, AI Snake Oil, you've referenced very nicely your fears about the availability of AI to consumers as a major societal problem. What would you tell consumers out there in terms of how they should be using the tools that are already available to them and save themselves from the inevitable pitfalls that come eventually? AI has many benefits. It also has risks. AI being widely available to consumers is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, uh, for the first time now in the last few years, it is the case that anyone can access really, really powerful AI systems that previously may have been only available to companies and governments. So we think that's largely a good thing. But of course, we can only realize the positives if we're very, very aware of the risks. Uh, we know what the risks are, broadly speaking. We have things like uh, students using AI to cheat and therefore not getting as much benefit out of education as they otherwise might. We have people using AI to create non-consensual nude images of people. This is, of course, affecting hundreds of thousands of primarily women uh, in every country in the world. So there are many of these types of misuses that are possible. Now, for some of these types of misuses, I think it's the individual's responsibility primarily, uh, although companies should certainly improve their products. So when we're talking about misuses like, for instance, lawyers who are using AI to try to get help in making uh, their legal arguments and they don't realize that these chatbots can quote unquote hallucinate, they can generate wrong information. And, uh, you know, there have been many stories of lawyers getting into trouble with judges. I think that's a matter of people needing to be better informed about the limitations of these systems. And the companies developing them need to make more clear what the limitations are. On the other hand, when we look at other risks, like uh, the things we were talking about, the creation of deep fakes, for instance, those should be addressed by regulation. It's not a matter of saying everybody should use these tools responsibly. There will always be bad actors and we need regulation to address those. And finally, in the book, we distinguish between generative AI, which is what I've been talking about so far, and predictive AI, which is used to make consequential decisions about people when we apply for a job, when we apply for a loan, or even in the criminal justice system in many countries. And this is a very dubious kind of AI. It's being used to predict who will commit a crime, who will pay back a loan. These are things that are hard to predict. And so uh, these uh, AI systems are being used in very unjust ways. And I think as a society, we should be really careful about them. We need more regulation. We need companies to think more carefully about how they're using these systems. Inherently, with something like generative AI, which needs data sets to learn what it eventually learns, is it really possible for it to perhaps avoid problems like bias or hallucinations? In the last couple of years, there has been a lot of progress made on the problem of bias. So for instance, one kind of bias is that if generative AI is primarily trained on uh, text and images from the Western world, it might not be very good at, for instance, speaking in Indian languages or correctly visually representing 
the culture in many countries of the world. This has been a problem for a long time. Things are actually improving. There are ways to incorporate more diverse data sets in the training of these systems. There are ways after they have been trained to kind of fine tune their behavior so that they're uh, better aware of cultural differences, nuances, progress is happening on these fronts. It's not going to be perfect. The hallucination problem, I think, has been harder to solve. But I think more and more, we are seeing chatbots that don't necessarily answer questions from their memory, so to speak, but retrieve information from the web and try to summarize that information. That cuts down the rate of hallucinations. It doesn't completely solve the problem. So I think for the time being, users of generative AI have to be aware that this is an inherent limitation. I don't know on what time frame it's going to be solved, if ever. So it's going to be our responsibility to be more careful.